Okay, this is for all of you Karatikus Potts wannabes out there. And for those of you who don't know who Karatikus Potts is, watch the movie Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. What I have here is my homemade pickup winder, which uses a variable speed drill to spin the bobbin so I can wind the wire onto it. And one of the important aspects of winding a pickup is knowing how many times that bobbin has spun around. It, you need a, a counter to do this. And I've seen all kinds of crazy ways of wiring up counters to, to motors to do this. But what I've come up with is a fairly elegant solution. And I've actually seen other guys doing this, so I'm, I can't really stake the claim to it. Um, but when I put it together, I was somewhat skeptical until I actually used it and was shocked at how well it worked. What it is is a, a, a simple pedometer that you can buy um, at a local sporting goods store. They're only a couple of dollars. And if you take the back off of the pedometer, you'll find that on the inside there's a hammer. And the way the pedometer works is as you're walking, that hammer bounces up and down. And when the hammer strikes uh, a spring, it closes a circuit which trips the counter. So what I did was, is I removed that hammer and there's a thin wire that comes out of the circuit board that attached to the back pivot side of the hammer and I soldered one wire to it and then to the spring that the hammer strikes I soldered another wire. Then I routed those two wires and soldered it to the back of a reed switch. Now a reed switch is a, it's a pair of uh, very thin pieces of metal that are separated by just a tiny amount of air and when a magnet passes in front of the reed switch it causes those metal uh, reeds to connect uh, thus closing the circuit and you can get a reed switch in one of those uh, home window alarms that are available at the dollar stores um, so basically when the magnet passes that reed switch, it's, it closes a signal and increases the counter uh, in increments of one each time the magnet passes in front of it. So let me show you how this works. The base of the winder is a piece of maple and I've attached two wood screws in it which will help level the drill. Um, I don't know that it's absolutely necessary to have the drill level. That's just the Karatikus pots in me. Then I have another piece of maple here that has two screws in it. One is intended to keep the drill from rocking forward, while the other one has a piece of uh, masking tape wrapped around it, and then I uh, fitted it with a, one of those Dremel sanding drum sleeves. Then I have another maple arm that comes off of it and attached to that, or drilled into it, is a, uh, an old screwdriver um, piece which I use to guide the wire. The way it works is, first you have to clamp the base down to a table firmly so that it won't move. Then you simply place the drill onto the base, and then I have a couple of these bungee cords which I purchased from the dollar store and they just wrap around and attach the screws on either side to hold it firmly to the base and then another screw to keep it from rocking back and forth like so and then just make sure that the this lower screw is resting against the handle not not pressing it but just resting against it then I have a block of maple here which I drilled a hole in the center of and attached the end of a carriage bolt to and epoxied it in place and that simply fits into the drill and then the pickup bobbin will attach to the front of that. The counter is connected to the drill to the body of the drill with just a simple rubber band so that the reed switch is right next to the chuck and the magnet attaches to the chuck itself like so 
and you've got to make sure that the magnet is fairly close to the reed switch in order for it to start working. There's not a lot of, of range with these things, so as long as it isn't touching and it's close, you'll be fine. Now, after you've attached the bobbin to the front of the winder, you can reset the counter to zero, and then make sure that everything is set up properly. And then you'll have your spool of wire down on the floor with the wire coming up over the guide and to the bobbin. And all you have to do to get it to start running is to turn that screw that runs the trigger And then you can adjust the speed by simply turning the screw in further. Now one thing that's important to remember is reed switches won't allow you to go at super high speeds. So you'll have to watch the counter as the bobbin is turning and see if it's skipping any steps. If it is, back off the speed a little bit or you can adjust the clearance with the magnet to get it just right. Very simple.